So welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new Human Experience podcast. Today is June the 3rd, 2021. The topic for this evening is the Radiant Kingdom. And I want to actually start off by asking a couple of questions. The I think the question that I really want to check in with everybody was um, how how's everyone feeling in this moment? Just take um, a few moment to kind of get present. Take a deep breath in. And then just focus on your heart and just feel. How do you feel in this moment? What is the, the predominant feeling that you feel right now? Do you feel composed, as in being calm, and also being um, enthusiastic about the future? Or do you feel a sense of anxiety and apprehension about when the other shoe is going to drop? Uh, the reason why I ask this is um, because um, recently uh, somebody shared with me their frame of mind. And it, it was not something that I, I asked specifically. She just spontaneously share that she um, had some very, um, a, a few, I would say, unexpected things happening in her life in the past, oh, let's say 12 months or so. And, um, and so she said that she was feeling this anxiety and unsecure of how she's going to be able to um, get through this, 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 I would say, rather challenging reality right now, being a, a single mother of two. Um, and I happen to know that she is a very conscientious, very hardworking and courageous woman and I was absolutely surprised and um, I have no idea that, that she actually, um, that's how she, she, she feels most of the time. And she, she is saying that she has been, as far as she could remember, that's the feeling that she had is, is this um, anxiety. And it's been with her, not just for the last 12 months, but pretty much uh, a better part of her life. And so she's been on this high alert for as long as she can remember. And it's just by looking at her, if you look at her, you will not have guessed that because she came across as being um, like a very caring person, but at the same time, a um, somebody that you can count on, somebody that you would be able to that, that who would be able to take care of herself and and everyone else around her. That's how she came across to me. And this, however, when she described this feeling on, of anxiety, I I can definitely at at some at some point I actually felt oh my gosh I just I feel for her I feel for her and then um when i looked when i kind of dig deeper in it is that um i i'm familiar with that feeling too that feeling of in kind of well in i guess in the worst um, case scenario it feels like an impending sense of doom and there have been times in my life when i felt that and so this is a feeling that I, uh, I've i been there, I'm familiar with, the, the feeling of being at the mercy of our circumstances. So that's something that I'm familiar with. And, and fortunately, I would say that now I've, I don't always have that feeling. Or I should say that I 
occasionally have that feeling. However, most of the time I don't have that feeling. And I can totally understand why she would have that because you know when when all you know your your whole life is this conversation in your head and this conversation that oh you're not good enough and that you whatever it is you're not enough you somehow it's it's like no matter what you do you um you it's it's like how do you control reality when all you know is the stories and conversation in your head it's very hard to believe that there exists a reality that is outside of the picture or the reality that is created by the conversations in your head. And when people like um, more, more of the, um, I would say more tapped in and more, more highly spiritual people say that we create our own reality, what do they really mean? And when I really look into it, that's that's actually what they mean, is that our thoughts create our reality. And when we are somehow stuck in, in some of our stories and we keep telling ourselves the same stories over and over again, um, and we, we let those stories occupy our mind and really take up uh, real estate in our mind, then um, it's like we choose to focus on those stories. And those stories that we choose to focus on is what create our reality. And that's how we actually create our reality. And in every moment, we, whether it is, um, joy or whether it is terror or anything in between, we can actually experience those. We can experience joy right now, and we can also experience um, utter terror in this moment right now. It all depends on what it is that we hold in our mind. And that's really how we create our reality. So who is the one that chooses these things? And, and the answer, of course, is we do. Each and every one of us, we are free to choose the stories that we keep repeating to ourselves. And therefore, we actually are also capable of choosing our experiences as well. And we choose our experience by shaping our mind. Our soul is infinite and eternal, and it is unique. Each and every one of our soul is a unique expression of source, of the creator source. And as source wants to cre explore itself, it, it kind of parceled out, it, it split out this desire to know itself into many infinite unique expressions as soul and each and every one of us so is a unique expression of this source who wants to explore itself our soul figured okay our soul kind of um i should say no not figured but um somehow create and fun configure a mind and we use this mind as a way to focus our soul and to think and to organize all the thought forms that we allow and our mind really is a perceiver and receiver of thoughts those thoughts, what are those thoughts? Those thoughts are really, um, they are creations of our, of our soul. And depending on 
where our soul wants to to kind of um, hang out in, depending on the, the 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 frequency and vibration of our soul, then it influences what is available for our minds to perceive. And as our mind perceive and able to um, organize thoughts and thought forms, our mind projects all of these thoughts through a body which our mind then can experience these thoughts that is its creation. And that is really the, the, the relationship between our soul, our mind and our body. So mind and body is one unit. All of these three is really just as important because the soul kind of determines the, 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 the vibration and what it is that's available for our mind to perceive. And then it is up to our, our mind to be able to perceive and also um, organize and think and, and analyze. And then whatever it is that we focus on, that's what we would project for our body to experience. So all of these, each, each step, all work as a unit. And I'm sharing this over and over again because I really want to impress upon all of you that there is a, a progression. And because now that you know what this progression is, that you have so much control over what you experience. And the first step to get control of what it is that you can experience or will experience is really to shape your mind. The first step then is to get out of any situation or whatever it is that you call it, uh, or you think of as your reality um, or, or in your reality that you do not prefer to experience. And I would call that a situation. So first step to get out of a situation is to clear your mind. And this mind discipline, disciplining your mind is shaping your mind and really getting control of what your mind focus on and what goes through your mind is how you can create your reality and learning to discipline your mind is really a skill. It's, it's a muscle that we can all, if we choose to, if we, if we choose to take control of our creation of what it is, what reality, what, what um, the quality of the reality that we want to experience, then we actually have all that we need under the control by controlling and shaping our mind by developing this discipline that we have of controlling what it is that we allow our mind to focus on. And so this is really what um, growing our consciousness is about, is shaping and applying discipline in our mind. And because I'm interested in, in learning this and learning how to raise my own awareness, my own consciousness and learning how to assist others as well. So, 
this is something that I, 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 I reflect on a lot. And I kind of retrace my own, the, the, the steps that I have went through and is still going through in order to get to um, more disciplined mind. I'm not saying that I'm disciplined 100% of the time or maybe even 50% of the time, but um, now I actually, or at the very least, I notice when my mind is in a, in a frenzy being consumed by a certain thought pattern. So when I'm when I'm doing that and and I notice that, oh, okay, I'm not having the best experience or I'm not having the experience that I would prefer to have, then I actually now know, oh, okay, stop, stop, just stop everything, stop this obsessing, stop spinning the same conversation in my mind is to just stop and really just observe my own thinking. And I, I really credit all of this um, by, I credit this to meditation because meditation is like, it is, it's a discipline that, and it's a great tool that we all can use. And the point of, of meditation is really a, to take time out of our day to get to the point where we get out of our stories. We let go of our stories and simply observe the, the stories that's spinning in our mind instead of um, having any attachment, in, instead of focusing on just one part of the story is to be able to zoom out and just focus on nothing and allow the our thought my thought patterns to simply flow and when i when i do and practice that in meditation it becomes easier for me to do it when i'm not meditating so that when i am in a situation where i'm you know just spin when I when I don't have a, I'm not having a good time because I already have that practice I already have that the the have strengthened that muscle of disciplining my focus my mind on what it is that the stories that I spin in my mind I'm able to even when I'm not meditating even when I'm just having a conversation with someone and feeling that trigger, I would be able to just step back and allow myself to observe my own thinking and let the, um, and let that, that circling around and around. And because when, when we circle something, we focus on it, the more energy we 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 um, put on certain thoughts, then we create it. We start to create a situation so that we can actually experience it. That's how we create. So when we can focus on letting go of putting energy to whatever it is that we are having an attachment or having a trigger, then we can discreate so easily. And when you learn how to control that, you also would be able to create as well. So that's when we can create and discreate at will. And when you have done this, practice this enough times, it, 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 uh, it gets easier. I'm not saying that it, it is going to be easy right from the start. Um, some people will take some years in order to get to that point of being able to let go of certain thoughts, of certain thought patterns. Some patterns are easier to let go of than others. And how long is it going to take for you to let go of certain patterns? It um, 
it's hard to say. It really depends on what lesson it is that you are prepared to learn. When you are prepared to get back to being the creator in your own life, then you can discipline your mind to get to the point where even some of the things that you have had so much energy put into it, that it's it becomes easier and easier for you to let go of. And if you look at what the, the, the world is like outside, and you may, you may think that, oh, this, it's a mess. It's, it's really um, a big mess. And that's one point of view as well. And when you can let go of that point of view, and realize and really know that the world is absolutely perfect, just as it is right now, because it is perfectly reflecting the state of our collective mind. And when you don't have any resistance to this, when you have no resistance that we, each and every one of us, create by our focus. And right now, our collective mind is being focused in a certain way. And that's why it is the way it is. And you realize the perfection in it. Then you can start to shift it. You may not be able to shift the whole collective right away. However, no matter what is happening, in the collective mind, you have to also understand that the collective mind is just a collection of all our minds. And that you, no matter how um, singular you feel, no matter how small a percentage or how um, unpopular you think or um, that you think your your thought forms may be the, 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 the new stories that you want to grow from your mind is, is that um, no matter what is happening in the collective, because you are a creator, you can still create what it is that you desire to experience. And this is this is the the power of a creator. You can still create whatever it is that you want, no matter what other people are creating. And that's a good thing because um you that's how powerful each and every one of us are. And right now, that's why there's so much manipulation in how we think. Mind control, it's kind of, they're telling us that we have no control because we're just one person. What can I do? I am only human. That's, that's actually... Um, that's actually not true because you are a creator as well. A human is also a creator. And when you really realize how powerful you are, that even in a desert, if you wish to have water and you really focus on having water, having the experience of water, having the experience of drinking this pure and, and, and quenching, thirst quenching liquid 
when you have that and you hold that, you can create that. How is it going to happen? I cannot tell you. It really depends on um, the universe. It could be, it could come down in a form of rain. It could come down as a form of you, somebody um, being able to cut open a cactus plant and be able to offer you the juice that's within this cactus plant. Or maybe you happen to come across an oasis. It all depends on what the universe, um, how the universe decides to co-create with you. Is that even if it's just one, one person, only you, you are the only one in the world who want to experience peace. you will be able to, even if everyone else is fighting a war, but you will be able to experience peace. The only um, caveat to that is that you create for yourself. You can only create for yourself. When enough people in the human collective also resonate with wanting to experience peace, then peace will come about. Even if there is, there are people out there who still wants to fight war, they will create their own wars within their own backyard. And that really is how creation works. Your mind can create a radiant kingdom or a living hell. Either creation is equally accessible. And that is the power of your mind. When you have disciplined your mind and you can focus on what it is, that you want to experience, you will be able to project it through to your body so that your body can allow you to experience what you focus on. It's my wish for all of you is that you all would be able to love yourself enough to um, embark on this journey to balance your soul, your mind, and your body in such a way that you would be able to harness and be able to perfect your skill as a creator. And as you go on this journey of learning about and perfecting this this balance and oneness within yourself, you will also be able to lead the way for all of humanity, the human collective, to come into oneness as a planet one day as well, so that one day, I don't know how long in the future, but I do know that that is the, that really is um, something that we can all look forward to, is that the whole planet Earth, all of us, the, the human collective, the Earth collective, would be able to coalesce into oneness, a planetary oneness, where we will be able to think our own unique thoughts and also be able to come together as a planet to be able to share all of our thoughts and be able to create just from our mind. 
and that is my wish for you, for all of you, and also for planet Earth as well. And so that is all I want to share this evening.